And she joins us now from San Diego. So, uh, Susan, we heard uh, from uh, Vice President Mike Pence there. On the one hand, uh, attacking China for its record on human rights and uh, particularly its recent uh, or what's been happening in Hong Kong. And then on the other, uh, saying, well, we're working together, we can get a trade deal. So is it possible to have both? Uh, certainly it is. And uh, the vice president basically reprised the speech he'd given a year ago at the Hudson Institute, which is a long list of uh, evil deeds that China has done, not just on human rights, uh, but in the South China Sea and um, in its economic and trade policies, its military buildup, uh, as well as its efforts to try to influence public opinion outside of China uh, coercively uh, to agree with Beijing's positions on Tibet, uh, Xinjiang, Taiwan, and other issues, Hong Kong, which are essentially domestic political issues inside China. So he did that, but then he went on to say, to actually uh, reach out a hand to China and to suggest that if we can get the economic issues right, if we can get an agreement, ju not just about trade, but about the structural issues that bring China back in line with international market norms, then the way could be open to restore a positive relationship between the two countries. Well, let's focus on that trade side for a moment. Uh, there appears to be some progress on this phase one deal, particularly around agricultural purchases. But going ahead, uh, can any deal be both enforceable and durable? Well, I mean, we have to test it by uh, an effective negotiation. And uh, it looks like maybe after a long time of uh, not very effective negotiation, our side at least is really trying to work the issues uh, at the lower levels so that then it can be blessed by the leaders. And we have to test the flexibility of Xi Jinping and the folks on that side. But I think it was good that Vice President uh, Pence did hold out the offer of restoring some balance in U.S.-China relations if they can take the hard steps to get uh, their economic system more back in line with international norms. And it's interesting, he even mentioned how Deng Xiaoping, after launching China's reform and opening back in 1979 uh, and the 80s, you know, that the United States welcomed that, supported that, and helped boost China as an international player because we were so encouraged by the reforms underway inside China. So if somehow Xi Jinping could act like Deng Xiaoping, um, maybe we could get back on a decent relationship between the two countries. The vice president also saying that rather than decoupling the two economies that the U.S. is seeking engagement with China, have we seen the U.S. actions backing the vice president's words? Uh, well, that's a very good question. Um, you know, what does engagement really mean? What engagement means is... Uh, working together with Chinese counterparts, Chinese officials, to try to get agreement on areas where uh, we have some serious complaints. And as far as I can tell, other than the trade agreements, there hasn't been that much agreement between the two sides. So, uh, and of course, both sides now have put up new barriers on, by imposing visa restrictions on the other side. Um, and there are other obstacles that domestic politics, uh, uh, primarily on the two sides, are driving the two countries further apart. So what's changed since the talks broke down 
in the spring of this year because it seems China wants the exact same things. When you're talking about agriculture purchases from China, sources telling Bloomberg that they will not go ahead and purchase what President Trump said could be up to $50 billion of farm goods, but instead they'll only do that if you get the tariffs off the table. Well, I think it's it, we make it a lot harder for the Chinese side to compromise, to get their own interest groups uh, to go along with concessions. When we take too um, harsh a hostile stance toward China. And uh, I think a number of actions on the U.S. side, including the embargo of U.S. technology sales to Huawei, uh, the arrest of uh, Ms. Meng in Canada, these things kind of changed elite opinion and public opinion in China so that they now see the United States government, and not just the Trump administration, as being so hostile to China that it makes it very difficult for them to make compromises. So I think the Pence speech is a step in the right direction of taking a tough principled stand, but at the same time leaving the door open to getting back to uh, cooperation.